Well, Mark, I think it's going to be one of these press conferences where we spend a lot of time talking about injuries. Hopefully you've got some good news in the mix somewhere. Let's start with Dimmy. We saw him on Tuesdays on crutches. We all saw what happened at the weekend. What's the situation for him? Yeah, very little news on Dimmy in the fact that he's got a scan today. Um, but he's very, very swollen and black and blue in his ankle. So we expect him to be out for a period of time. But the, hopefully the um, severity of that injury and the outcome of the scan will give us a little bit more knowledge um, today. The scans today, we don't expect the report to be written and, and reported on until Monday. So I don't think we'll know any time frames until next week, but we're certainly not expecting him back anytime soon. Um, it'll certainly be a few weeks for sure, which is a, which is a real disappointment for us. Um, but we're well equipped everywhere else. You know, Will's, um, Will's had a few games now in the cup competitions. We've obviously got James as well. So we're, we're quite confident that um, he's ready to play and, and, and go into the team. He did so at the back end of last season. He has done in the cup games this season. So it's disappointing for Dimmy and for us because he's um, he's a big part of the team. But we'll, um, we'll have to adjust with that and uh, hope that it's not too long term. Was this your plan right from the start of the season? We saw last time around you used the emergency loan with the goalkeepers, but were you always confident this time around that will it be ready to go if if needed? Yeah, I mean, one of the reasons we gave Will some games at the end of last season and the cup games this year is for that scenario. He's, he's made really good progress. He's in good position himself, so really confident in him. I think the last time around, um, Kai McKenzie-Lyle was, was thrown in when Dimmy got knocked out at Shrewsbury and it was a difficult day for us and we were in a difficult spot at the time and we felt like an experienced goalkeeper coming in would really help us. But we think Will's had some good experience with us now and uh, and we like him, so we're, we're really ready to to get him in the uh, get him in the team, have a run of games and, and see how he goes. But it's a great opportunity for him as much as it's a downside for, for Dimmy and hopefully, as I say, Dimmy can get himself back. I mean, I wouldn't say it's the it's a planned scenario because we didn't plan on Dimmy getting injured, but we're certainly confident that Will can come in. Yep. You're still there. Are you okay? I think we might have lost you yeah, for a second. I'm there. Can you hear me? And, and okay. No, that's all right. We can, yeah, just a little pause. Let's move on to left back then with Harrison and with Brandon. Are you still a bit bit light there? We are, yeah. Uh, Harrison, um, Best case scenario, potentially next weekend. Um, so that would give us the opportunity to, to play with a back four or certainly to, to play with a more uh, settled left back in the team. Uh, he was out running on Tuesday and doing a little bit of ball work. He'll do similar today, but it's taken him some time to build up. His, he's been out for a little bit of time now. His knee's settled down. He's had an injection in the knee and, and that's settled nicely, but just needs to build all the strength around that now so that there's no... Uh, lasting damage or further problems. So we're probably a couple of weeks away from seeing him. Uh, Brandon's had a setback with his calf and, and he'll certainly be missing for the next uh, probably month to six weeks. So we don't expect to see him until end of November, or early December. Um, so that's disappointing for him and for us as well, because it leaves a little bit light in that, that position. On to Paul Digby, picked up an injury at the weekend. What's the, what's the latest with him? Um, Digby will train today, non-contact, hopefully get through that okay. Um, Shiloh, similar, he's got a problem in his quad. Uh, Joey, similar, bit of a problem in his knee. Um, we hope that they can get out on the grass today, but we're not certain on all of those. Um, so we'll see where they are over the next couple of days. They're the, they're the three players that have got a chance for the weekend, um, but it will depend on what they're doing the next couple of days. And we're not guaranteed that they're all out training this morning. Was Lloyd just given a, a rest on Tuesday night? Yeah, I think with with him, he's um, he's played a lot of football. He's been a bit tight in his hips as well, so we've had to sort of rest him out. Um, so I think the other night, really, they had a whole batch of players that, for one reason or another, were just not quite ready to ready to contribute and ready to play or go again. Um, in the case of those that did, I think there's three players: Brophy, Taylor, Williams, that did play uh, Saturday, Tuesday, which was difficult for them and tough, but. Um, they got through the game really well, and, and we're pleased with that. But everybody else should be um, everybody else should be able to to go again, apart from the the um, the other ones. I mean, the, the 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 biggest sort of injury news that we've got now is Adam May. Um, we've had the results, everything back from him. That's sort of the worst news we could have expected, really. So um, he's got a rupture in his ACL, his anterior cruciate ligament, uh, which needs a reconstruction. So that will put the end to his season, and we're probably looking at nine months for for him. So it's a long, long road to recovery for him, which is. Um, big loss for us as a team and, and really disappointing for him as well. He's not a boy who's 
had many injuries in his career, if at all, and this will keep him out for a long, long period of time. So that's a challenging time for him and we'll support him every way we can, as we have done with the players that are long-term injured in the past. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a real blow to us because he's a, he's a good player, trains every day. He's made huge strides, I think, since he's joined us permanently and uh, over the last couple of years, we've been delighted with his progress. Um, but yeah, the, the, the worst fears of the scan really became clear and he's had his consultations now and he'll, um, he'll have an operation in the next couple of weeks and, and that'll keep him out long term. Yeah, one of the worst ones you can get really in this day and age as a as a footballer, and I guess underlines the real benefit of having someone like a Greg around. We know what he went through last season with a a serious injury. Having that experience is at least a, a chance, really, to to have somebody who knows what it's like and can help Adam out a bit. Well, I think Greg he's had the experience of last year here, and for Jerry, he's had a, a similar experience elsewhere where he's missed uh, a year or the best part of. Uh, season so that's a, a difficult thing to deal with and I think the the opportunities that come from long term being injured there are moments where you can make progress and, and develop in other areas obviously but I think in the early part of the injury it's almost a bit of a shock for players and they almost they almost have to just get their head around that and, and know how long the term that is so that's a that's a real disappointment for us and for Adam as I say and we'll miss him in the team and we'll miss having him around every day for that but be a long road to recovery but as we've seen in the past with those two examples I've already given you you know he'll, he'll get back from it and get back from it stronger and we'll we'll um, we'll support him brilliantly throughout that that whole period of time anyway needs to make sure that he's coming into next season in really good uh, really good shape. Yeah, and it all has the feel a little bit of it was Doncaster away last season where you had a, a problem with the goalies. You mentioned Dimmy getting injured at Shrewsbury and a number of injuries, and it, it came together really well. And and the team spirit was brilliant. I guess that's what you're looking for this weekend is for everyone to really pull together and and make the most of what is a difficult situation. Yeah, as normal. I think in in I mean that's a really good example because it, it just remind you that this does happen in most seasons to to every team and you can't choose when you play certain teams and what moment they're in when you play them um, and also you can't choose the order of your fixtures or the timing of your injuries and they tend to come in these really busy spells so the, the squad is obviously really tested at the moment with form and results and injuries but we've, we've had moments in the past I said to the players last week if you're ever looking for confidence you've only got to look at history and if history shows you've done it before then it means you can do it again so but for us, I think that's the main the main purpose now is to keep um, digging in, roll your sleeves up and, and get on with it because we can't control all of those things. We can choose our response to them. Um, and we know we're in a, a moment where games have been hard for us and, and we've had some, some tough situations along the way. But Tuesday night, we responded brilliantly and, and played well and got a good result. And we go into the game at the weekend trying to do similar again, knowing that we've got a big week ahead of us, three tough games coming up. Um, but we've got to go into it with some some optimism. And in the end, whilst there are a number of players that won't be available, if you're in the team, your responsibility is to deliver a really good performance and, and create the energy and the atmosphere in the team that gives us a chance of doing well. So that's all of our jobs, really, to try and do that. Um, and we're looking forward to the challenge. What do you make of Port Vale as a side? Got promoted, of course, over the summer. And they, I would have thought, will feel they've made good, steady progress so far. I think they'll be really pleased with their start to the season. I think they've done well. I think we know firsthand um, what you can get from being a team that starts a season well um, off the back of a promotion. And, and I think that real hunger and mo momentum and enthusiasm from a promotion sort of lasts. And you go into every game excited by a new challenge. So for us this time, we've sort of seen lots of these things before, lots of these places before. I'm not suggesting them coming to Cambridge United is one that turns them on as much as some of the other ones do. But it is still a new season and a new challenge. And I think they've taken to it really well. They've got fairly good continuity in the team that got promoted and they've added well. I think they've got a big squad with lots of options. Um, and particularly strong in the attacking positions. Ellis Harrison has been, been excellent for them and, and scored a number of goals this season. James Wilson, really high pedigrees. He's, he's been very good for them this season. So certainly with a front two or front three that can cause lots of problems. They're a really high running team, high crossing team, high pressing team. Um, so we know we're going to have to be physically really committed to the game and ready for the duels and the 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 fight and scrap that it takes to be competitive. And we'll have to make sure that we bring out our own periods of control to the game as well. It's a, 
it's, a, it's an interesting game. Uh, I think it'd be a difficult game. And it's up to us to create an atmosphere and um, inspire each other with our performance levels. And just with the switch to the back three over the past couple of games, do you feel that's been more informed by the players that you've got available and trying to get as many players into positions they feel comfortable in? Or is there an element of this is a good moment just tactically to, to look at something different? Yeah, probably both, Swanee, really. Um, I think the injuries and the um, availability of certain players has made it um, probably a time where it was easier to say, right, make the change. But it's something we've been looking at and talking about for a while, even since last season. It's something I've spent a bit of time looking at while I've been away from the club, thinking, right, how can we try and create a different way of playing and develop a, a slightly different style or a slightly different dynamic? Because I think what you see with the best teams at the top level, but also the best teams in this level, is the ability to play multiple shapes and change shape within game is definitely there and definitely clear. Um, we went for a strategy this summer of a real high continuity in the squad and real high continuity in the playing style. And that paid off very, very well because our start to the season was exactly what we needed it to be. And then you know there's going to be a key period in the season where that won't just carry on because you get to the stage where other teams are quite settled, people know what you are, um, and you need to try and find different ways of, of, of playing. So I think the timing of it was probably inevitable anyway at some point but the injuries in the games that we had made it a period where it was almost the right time to do it and I've been really pleased with that in the last couple of games so I think what we've now got is an ability where we could probably play both and, and do different things um, which gives us a nice freedom so depending on player availability results and, and how we feel the opposition set up uh, I think we could probably see over the course of the season um, us dipping in and out of, of a number of different shapes now which should help us. In the past, when you, you haven't used it or haven't been so keen on using it, was that more to do with some of the weaknesses you could see within the shape or was it more to do with just wanting to focus on getting the back four absolutely spot on and available training minutes and all that side of things? Uh, I think probably a few things. Former players at the time, um, us being a team that's been recruited off of signing fullbacks and wide players and making sure we have wide players in the team really important to us. Um, and then obviously just the fact that we've done all right, we've won quite a lot of games and, and been doing well. So um, in that sense, you, you don't really need to change. I think I think what's really interesting in football is there's always a clamour to change. So there's always a clamour that if you, you're not winning 3-0, you better make a sub quickly. Um, or you better change your team or you better chuck someone out of the team because they're not doing well. You better change system because it hasn't worked. Um, Patience is a very, very, very rare commodity in football, but I am very calm and logical and patient and don't get wrapped up in the emotion of it all, which actually um, making decisions to not change is as important as making decisions to change. And over two and a half years, that's paid off pretty well for us. So um, I'm really confident, actually, that sometimes consistency and stability is as important as uh, sometimes change. You know, we're coming off an era where, I think in 10 years that I've been here before taking this job, 170 plus players have played in the first team for us. Um, that isn't sustainable. That isn't building connections and community and relationships. And it isn't building structure and stability in a team. So what we've done is, is, is go for something slightly different. And then we have to try and evolve that as we go forward into the next couple of years, that we've got a bit more variety in how we play and who we play with and the style in which we can adopt um, and then that makes us a, a more competitive and sustainable team at this level. So that's almost just the next stage of us, I think, developing. Um, and, and learning and development takes months rather than days. And, and that's just the reality. And um, quite often people want it done in hours. So, um, yeah, it's a good job that I'm fairly calm and know that the process of learning and development and stability does pay off. So I think we'll get there. Um, and it's quite an exciting period, actually, knowing that we're, we're trying something slightly different in the pressure moment of a season. I think that's um, something to quite enjoy the, the challenge of. Great. That's that's brilliant for me. Hi, Mark. Just um, on the formation point, how important is it to, to have a three at the back option, given so many sides seem to play three at the back in the league as well? Well, I think it just answered that. I think having the ability to change and play different styles is is important, full stop, regardless of um, whether they have or haven't. I mean, actually, quite a few teams have changed from a 3 to a 4 this season. So, um, And then teams have switched between the two. So uh, forget styles, formations, or things like that. I mean, 
the best team in our league, the Portsmouth uh, uh, Ipswich. And if I asked you what system they played, no one could tell you because it's actually not about that. It's more about principles of play and 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 spaces and things like that. And then the way you play a certain system can look completely different depending on who's playing it. So if you play with wing backs and they're wingers, it will look very different if you play with wing backs that are full backs. And uh, if you play with outside centre half that are centre backs versus being them full backs, it looks very different and so on. So I think there's lots of different ways of it looking, even with the same players. I think the key thing is that we try and develop some flexibility. I think over the certainly the promotion season and even at times last season, we always played a back four, but the front six would be quite fluid and would change its shape quite regularly. So the only difference we're, we're adding this time is we're being trying to get the ability to play with a three. But if you if you actually look and pause free frame the game at any time, sometimes it's a back three, sometimes it's a four, and sometimes it's a five, because the opposition numbers will sometimes dictate where you are on the pitch and the players playing in certain positions will as well. So I think just that flexibility of numbers and, and different ways of playing is just an important next stage for us to have variety in how we play. I think that's a, a, a next stage of our development, quite important. You've already mentioned that it's it's a big game this week. And just how important do you think it is to get back to winning ways in the league? Well, obviously we need to win a game, yeah, at some point. So um, it's important. But we won one a couple of weeks ago at Morecambe and everyone thought we were a brilliant team. And then we haven't won for four and loads of people say we're rubbish. So I know none of those things are true. So in the end, we have to try and win a game and, and get back to winning ways at some point. But hopefully it'll be Saturday. And if not, hopefully it's Tuesday. There's 31 games to play. There's over 90 points at stake. It's a long, long season. Um, we want to be, we want to be winning games. We want to um, get back to a team that is harder to beat and creative in terms of the chances that we create um, and the opportunities that we make in the game. But whilst our form or results recently almost demand that we get back to scoring points, that's obvious. Um, in the big picture, the game's no more or less important than any of the others. They're all worth the same value, but they can just feel a little bit more important. So I understand that there'll be a bit of anxiety around this game this weekend and a feeling that it is more important because of the last few results. But from our point of view, if, if we keep building what we're building, and um, most importantly, the, the people inside our building recognise we're a good team when we do certain things well, that, that, that really is the only thing that matters. And I'm sure when we do that, that will reflect with the points that we score. With um, Brandon Hornstrup's injury, how difficult has it been for him to settle into the club when he's had such a started start in a way with, with many injuries back to back? You'd have to ask him. I don't, I don't think it's been difficult to settle into the club. I think he's settled into the club and the, the group of players really well. But to find a consistent run in the team, he's obviously he hasn't been able to do so. Until he's fit, he won't be able to do that. But he's um, he's as much part of the group of players and the squad as, as anybody else is. So, yeah, no real drama in settling into the, the club in any ways at all. Um, he's just a frustrated player at the minute because he's not fit. And I think any of the players that um, are not quite fit, you, you ask any of them, they are desperate to contribute to the team. One, because they want to play and that's what they work the whole week for. But two, because when the team's in a moment like this, you don't want to be injured. You want to be able to help them. We've got a really together, committed group of players that are desperate to do well for each other, for themselves, for the club, for the coaches. Um, and, and, that, and that's why we've got to try and get a few of those fit. But we also know the time frame on quite a few of those is, is a while. Um, and therefore, it comes down to everybody else to do that. What was your take on the draw against um, Curzon, Curzon Ashton in the FA Cup? Yeah, I watched the draw on the Monday on the on, on BBC. I quite enjoyed it. Um, I was wondering what Dion was going to pull out for us. So um, my take, I think it'd be a tough game. I think these games are. I think you see a lot of those games. There's a lot of non-league clubs in the in the level. Um, when you go away, we've had experience of this in the past. That they'll be um, they'll be right up for the game, but I think so should we be. You know, we, we were the giant killers of the competition last year, and we know what this competition can bring and the opportunities and exposure it can give players and, and staff and your club as well. So if you want those moments, you've obviously got to get through the early rounds in order to do it. Um, so I actually think it's a game to to quite uh, relish and look forward to, and it will come in a month that's going to be fairly quiet at the moment, and depending on progress in that competition or replays. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll be able to go into it, hopefully off the back of a, a good training week. And um, once we know when that game is, it gives us a chance to 
to prepare really well for it. We'll do all our work as normal, looking forward to the game and um, be a nice challenge for us to go there and um, be the team that's expected to win against a team that will love that underdog spirit and those roles reversed. So, uh, yeah, one to one to look forward to when it comes around. But obviously, we've got a, a pretty significant and big week ahead before that. Just finally on Liam Bennett as well. How do, how do you see his um, his loan spell going at Walsall at the moment? It seems like he's getting a really good run in the team there. Yeah, to be honest, exactly as we hoped it would. Um, we hoped he could get to Christmas and play 20-odd games. So he's uh, got himself in the team. Obviously, he scored last week. Uh, ben Strand's watched him, Don Knighton's watched him. We've, we've watched a lot of video stuff. Gary and Barry stay in regular contact with him. So he's enjoying it. He's doing really well. He's getting a run in the team, which is perfect for him at this stage of his development um, to be playing that many games in that level. I think is really good for him. So we're really pleased with, with how that's going and uh, yeah, look forward to sort of monitoring that progress over the next few months. Would you consider recalling him in January or do you think it would be best for him to spend the season there? January is a long way off, mate. So we'll um, we'll deal with that one in January. As at the minute, I think our uh, he, he's doing everything he needs to do, which is focusing on being a good player for Warsaw and and for us. That that's exactly what we want him to do. So when January comes around, we'll have a plan for that. But we'll uh, we'll deal with that one when it comes. That's great. Thank you. Just one from me, Mark. Um, uh, I think Sam Smith's now gone ten games without goal in all competitions since um, the hat trick against Burton. Is he more of a marked man this season? Is he perhaps having to work on finding different ways to, to remain a threat? Um, I'm not sure if he's more, more of a marked man, really. I, I think he is a marked man, definitely. We've got to think about how and what sort of chances we create him. Um, and, and also, I think what, what you have to... Like, people need to respect the level. You've got to respect the level that we're playing at. Play at Sheffield Wednesday last week. We had loads of the ball. We create lots of moments. But a lot of six foot plus defenders throw their body in the way of things and defend really well. Some of the defenders at this level are championship players and they're very, very good. And in order to try to create chances, um, for years we wanted players that scored 20 goals. And then for two years running, we've had them. And, and it would be very foolish if people think that that's easy. That's a really rare commodity to be able to do that. Um, and I know that there's some geniuses in the top level of football that, this year that might score 50. So that they make goal scoring look easy. But obviously, it's really difficult. And some of the teams we've played with recently, in terms of the numbers of defenders they get behind the ball, the athleticism of those players and the qualities of their defending just mean that it becomes an ability of them that we, we've got to do well to create chances and score goals. So we've got to become more creative to the type of chances we create. And then obviously, that will improve the um, likelihood of him adding to his goal tally. But... He's a, he scored some wonderful goals earlier in the season. And then I think you look at the, the batch of games that we've played against recently and why we haven't got results or the teams that we haven't got results against. And if you predicted it at the start of the season, you wouldn't have wanted all those games to come in one block, one block but they have. So um, I've absolutely no doubt he's a, he's a goal scorer um, and, it, and he'll score plenty more for us. But um, yeah, it's probably a little bit more about how we create more chances for the team and playing in a slightly different way as we have done. Uh, if we do that more often, then that, that'll be something for us to learn as well.